Anacondas, Hunt for the Blood Orchid is a 2004 creature feature directed by Dwight H. Little. A scientific expedition sets out to Borneo to find a rare flower with life-extending properties, but standing between them and their prize is a nest of giant man-eating snakes. But before we get into this slithery snake-a-thon, I just want to ask if you could please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out. So thanks. Also, there will be full spoilers ahead, but if that doesn't bother you, then grab your rattlesnake tail flavoured popcorn and whip out your venomous cocktail shaker as we dive into Anacondas Hunt for the Blood Orchid. So the movie begins with a local tribe hunting a tiger in the jungles of Borneo, while making very convincing animal calls to each other so they can communicate while blending into their environment. <laughs> But suddenly the tiger jumps out from behind the bushes and right over this fella's head shouting GET OUT OF THE WAY! THERE'S A MASSIVE SNAKE CHASING ME! But the guy's like, oh tiger, you silly sausage, there's nothing chasing you! Ah! So he runs for his life with the snake close behind him. Then it grabs him and he's like, oh great, it got me. Oh, and now it's dropped me on my chest. Wonderful. Oh, and now I've fallen off a waterfall. Just what I needed. Oh brilliant, now I'm dying like the girl at the beginning of Jaws. Oh, what a terrible start to my week this is. Then we cut to New York City, where, as usual, business bastards are talking bastard business. I'm sorry, Gordon, but the adventure is over. You're wrong. The Indiana Jones franchise can't end with Dial of Destiny. It just can't. Anyway, back to business. I don't suppose anyone here is familiar with the Hayflick limit? Duh. It's the limit of Hayflick. Obviously. So this fella, who I'm going to call Coronation Street, goes on to say there's an extremely rare flower in the jungles of Borneo which has the power to make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. That'd be bigger than Viagra. Are we talking about a pharmaceutical equivalent to the Fountain of Youth? No, it turns you into a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Damn it, Fred, did you not hear a single word he just said? Fred agrees the power flower is worth searching for, so Morris Peanut and Coronation Street head off to Borneo, where the weather forecast is clouded with a chance of being wet as fuck. And they meet up with Gail, who I'm gonna call Quail, because it sounds better. What's wrong with this picture? And she says, well, the body looks a bit weird, the legs are all over the place, and less said about the head the better, but what's your point? No, there isn't a point, I'm just not a very good artist. Then another member of the team turns up called Sam. But let's just throw a P in there and call a Spam, shall we? So Spam tells the team that their boat ride has been cancelled because it's wetter than a sea lion's ass at the moment. But she also says, There's a local captain named Jen Soon. I'm told he'll take anyone upriver for the right price. God damn, I don't know what it is about that accent on a lady, but it drives me wild, it does. So they go to this bar and meet a fella who they think is Jin Soon and offer him 25,000 to take him up the river. 25,000 what though? Staples? Crayons? Fizzy cola bottles, maybe? Christ, I'd do it for 25,000 cola bottles. But, uh, I don't have a boat. Anyway, this guy, who I'm going to call Terry, no relation to the chocolate orange, isn't really the captain, so he takes them to him. And the captain turns out to be Johnny Messner. And if you're thinking, who the hell's Johnny Messner? It's him. He's Johnny Messner. I just bloody told you. Also, the character's name is Johnson, not Jin Soon. But I'm just going to call him Johnny, because it makes me think of condoms. <laughs> so Johnny says the price is now 50,000, and Quail says, 50 grand, are you high? No. But they pay it and get ready to depart. Then they see Johnny's boat and they're like, What is that? What the fuck is that? And Johnny says, Yeah, she may be ugly, but she puts out. Dude, if you're gonna tell her your mum joke, you have to add, like your mum, at the end, otherwise it won't make any sense. Oh, and there's a couple more team members who arrive a little late. Namely, Toucan Badman and Sex Pest. One wears a hat and the other one doesn't take no for an answer. And off they go on their soggy trip down the river towards the power flower. Let's hope they don't run into any giant man-eating snakes along the way. Spoilers, they do. Also, I couldn't help but notice the boat is called Bloody Mary. I had a Bloody Mary once. Didn't much care for it though. Too much blood, not enough Mary for my liking. So the team discuss the most optimal route to the power flower and Toucan Badman plots it on his laptop because he's good with computers and that, eh? Then he says, I'm a bad man. Why, what'd you do? I reckon he looked a gift horse in the mouth. Meanwhile, Quail is having a look around and finds the most ingenious toilet known to man. But I tell you, that is one toilet you don't want to fall into. Not that you'd want to fall into a normal toilet, which I actually did when I was younger. It was both horribly unpleasant and downright hilarious at the same time. Anyway, Quail finds Johnny's pet monkey being cute as a button, but gets freaked out because she's never seen a live animal before. I'm going to call the little fella Banana Bill. Later that day, both Quail and Morris Walnut are struggling to get reception on their sat phones. So, Johnny's first mate, Terry, says, Try my phone. Works just as good, but it's free. Oh, cheers, mate. Hang on a minute. This is a wood carving. 
I've been had! Elsewhere on the boat and Sex Pest is living up to his namesake and says, So Spam, how about a little- No! Oh, go on! No! Fuck off! And that's the end of that. Later that evening and while the group are having dinner, Banana Bill tries to pill for some fruit. But Johnny catches him in the act and says, Yeah, you get out of there, you cheeky little monkey cunt. So Banana Bill decides to leave the boat and find some wild fruit. And oh no! Now the boat's leaving! Hurry Bill or you'll be left behind! Oh! Now he's being chased by a mega snake! Oh, this is terrible! Then we hear Bill scream and we're meant to assume that he got eaten, but don't worry, he didn't. The next day, Quail is once again having trouble with her phone reception. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. How about now? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I just said yes, I can hear you! What are you, fucking deaf? Then she falls off the boat like a drunken sailor. Everyone has a good laugh at her, but just as Johnny's about to help her, she's attacked by a crocodile! So Johnny dives into the water and wrestles the croc into submission. Afterwards, he gets back on the boat and says, Don't worry, folks, it's just unconscious. Me and Larry, that's the croc's name, do this on a weekly basis for the tourists. Though, he tends to take it too far sometimes, because he's a bit of a show-off. Then as the boat is floating away, Larry shouts, See you next week, Johnny lad! And off he goes. So, everyone's having a good old chin wag as Quail dries off. But suddenly, Banana Bill falls from the sky, saying, Oh, oh God, I went to get some fruit, but the, the boat was leaving me without me, and, and then I got chased by a massive snack. Oh, I was so scared, Johnny, I was so scared! That evening, Johnny tells Coronation Street that the rising water level is making the quickest route too risky. But Cory wants to risk it for a biscuit, and says, Do you have any idea what this flower means? Imagine a five-foot boner that lasts for hours. <laughs> now that is a big boner. But Johnny says, Wow, that does sound great, Jack. But it's going to cost you an extra 50,000. Bloody hell, man. It's going to be hard to find 50,000 bags of cheese XL crisps, but you've got a deal. The next day, Johnny is woken up when some debris in the water gets the boat's engine clogged up. And the timing couldn't be worse, as they're approaching a split in the river labelled safe slash really fucking dangerous. And they're drifting towards the latter. And before long, they're going over the waterfall whether they like it or not. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> Thankfully, everyone survives the accident and makes it to shore. And as you can imagine, everyone's pretty miffed about their dire situation. But Coronation Street is insistent that they continue towards the flower, as he really, really wants that five-foot boner. So Johnny says his mate Pisshead Pete should be in the area, so hopefully he can give them a lift if they cut through the jungle. Alright, Pete, it's rubber, Johnny. I'm afraid we're in a bit of a pickle. A giant pickle. And we need a lift down river. Help us out, will ya? Well, well I will. If you like, buy us four bottles of scrumpy and a, a, a bag of, or what would you call them, loud potato things again? What? Chips? Aye, I had a big, big bag of chips at all. Ooh, you drive a hard bargain, pal, but you've got a deal. Spam then says, Your friend, is he reliable? Nah, man, he's off his tits 24 7, but he's the best chance we've got. Fuck! Johnny also tells the gang that while they're in the jungle, no one strays from the group, because This jungle is all green all the time, and you will get lost. So off they go into the green, green jungle, thinking Ah! Something green! Ah! Something not green! Ah! After a bit of first-rate jungle trekking, they end up in some marshland, which has Johnny on edge. Banana Bill then spots an absolutely mahoosive snake below the surface of the water, and tries to warn the group. But they don't speak monkey, so it falls on deaf ears. Then all of a sudden, Sex Pest gets pulled under the water, but no one sees it happen. And they're like, where the hell did he go? Then he emerges from the water looking a little worse for wear, before a gigantic anaconda snatches him and goes absolutely apeshit. So everyone appropriately freaks the fuck out. They make it to the other side of the marsh and are pretty distressed by what's just happened. But Johnny tries to reassure them by saying, That was the biggest one I've ever seen by far. A freak of nature. The odds of running into another one that size are astronomical. Somehow I think those astronomical odds are going to increase. Significantly. Anyway, Corey is undeterred by this and says, Right, on with the mission then. But everyone's thinking, Sod the mission, man. Sex pest is being digested and we just want to get the hell out of here. So that's what we're going to do. Corey ain't having it though, and says he'll just throw more money at Johnny later to change his mind. Personally, I think throwing it at him is only likely to piss him off. I'd just hand him the money to be safe. So they continue through the jungle, and after a while they stop for a rest, with Morris Kashuna rubbing his horribly blistered foot. 
But just as he's about to put his boot back on, Terry stops him and says, You're wearing boots with no socks. No wonder you've got so many blisters, you dumbass. Oh, and there's a paralysis spider in one of them too. Cory scoops up the spider and says, I think I'll save this for later when I become the baddie. After some more walking, they finally get to the river, only to find that pisshead Pete's boat is fucked. What? It's proper fucked. <laughs> well, if they weren't feeling hopeless before, they sure as shit are now. But Terry finds some traces of a local tribe and thinks their village must be nearby. So, with no other option, they head in that direction. And it's back to trekking through the jungle until they get jump scared by pisshead Pete's really muddy corpse. <laughs> A dead man, yes. What gave it away? Probably his mouth going, oh. They eventually find the tribe's village, but it's abandoned. Well, apart from a dead snake with some legs sticking out of it, saying, Hello? Is anyone there? Um, yeah. Are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine. I've just lost my keys in here somewhere. Oh, okay. Um, well, can we borrow some materials to make a boat with, please? Yeah, sure. Just, ah, there's my keys. Oh, oh, no, 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 it's not. It's just a rib. Oh, where the devil are they? Cory then finds a carving on the tribe's well which depicts a snake and the power flower, which he reckons is why the snakes have grown so big. This makes him even more eager to find it, because that five foot boner ain't gonna grow itself. Anyway, the others fully can't be asked to find the flower anymore, so Cory goes full wanker and shouts, I don't need to consult you! I'm the one with authority here. And also the one with the maniac serial killer glare, now sit your ass down before I fucking bray! So, while they finish building the boat, Morris Macadamia Nut finds an emergency box in Cory's bag which contains <gasps> gun. But then Cory turns up and is like, I'm the baddie now, and gets his spider to bite poo and Morris. He quickly becomes paralysed while Cory takes the gun and leaves. Then Spam finds Morris who says, Spider Man. What? You're a superhero? No. Venom. Oh, you're an anti hero. No. So she runs off to tell the others Morris's big secret, but when they return they find a big old ceiling snake snacking down on him. So they set the hut on fire, but then find that Coronation Street has nicked the bloody raft. Oh, Cory, you ITV bastard. So they decide once again to cut through the jungle in hopes they can reach the other side of the river before Cory gets there, so they can take the raft back and kick him in the knees. So they leave the burning village and the last surviving tribe member says, Guys, why do I smell burning? Oh, there's me keys. Oh, oh no, 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 it's just another rib. Hang on a minute, I don't even own any keys. <laughs> oh, what a fool I am. Back to the group, and they get chased by a slithery scoundrel and end up falling into a cave. While navigating it, Toucan Badman gets turned around and doesn't know which path the others have taken. Thankfully, Terry finds him and they start to make their way back to the others. But Terry ends up falling into an underwater cave and he can't get out. If I was Toucan Badman, I would have stuck a leg down that hole so he could see where to come up, but woulda, coulda, shoulda, and sadly, Terry gets snatched by a big snack and meets his doom. They eventually find a way out of the cave, and just in time too, as a big snack sticks its head out going, <gasps> Finally! I found a way out of this damn cave! I'm free! <laughs> Good lord, could she possibly be any more attractive? I think not. Toucan Badman is a bit over-enthused by this and starts gobbing like a prat. Then another snack grabs him from behind. But Johnny's had just about enough of this snack shit and he kills the beastie with an absolutely badass knife throw. You saved me. Thank you. No worries, lal fella. Now what have you learned? Don't be so gobby. Spot on. Elsewhere, Cory finds the power flower and gets an absolute stonk on just looking at it. But the others have found him too and think, there's the git. Now where's his fucking boat? But when they leave, Cory hears a twig snap. And for some reason he suspects it's them. Dude, it's the bloody jungle. Why would you think it's them? Does he investigate every twig snap? Anyway, he gets lucky this time and finds them about to steal his boat. So he shoots Johnny in the arm. Because incapacitating the strongest opponent is the wise choice. No, no, it really is. I wasn't joking. Why do you always think I'm joking? So Cory makes Spam go across this unstable looking log to stuff a backpack with as many power flowers as she can. But on the way back, the log starts to break. And she thinks, this is awful. I'm on a precarious log and there's loads of snakes shagging below me. I want to go home. But Cory is like, just throw me the bag or I'll shoot your mates because I'm proper evil now. But as he catches it, Johnny gives him a wallop and the bag nearly falls into the snake pit, releasing the paralysis spider from its container. Cory goes down to pick up the backpack, but he gets bitten by the spider. Meanwhile, Johnny tries to help Sam, but she falls into the snake pit. Cory then delivers the best line in the movie. Oh! Before falling into the pit himself. 
Thankfully, the snakes only go for Cory, because Spam has plot armor, and she manages to climb out. But she's followed by Big Mammy Snake, who foolishly decides to snack on a gas can. So Toucan Badman picks up a flare gun and shoots the snake in the mouth, making it fall into the pit, and then they all explode? What the hell? Oh, fuck it, who cares? So the pit begins to collapse and buries all the snacks, apart from this one, who's like, Don't worry, I'm alright here, oh no! So the day is saved and Toucan Badman once again says, What can I say? I'm a bad man. Well, you did just put the giant anaconda on the endangered species list, so yeah, you are. Then they all travel down the river on the raft and live happily ever after. End of movie. Well, I think this is a really enjoyable movie. Sure, it's cheesy as all hell, the acting isn't the best, and some of the visual effects are really showing their age now, but it's still a ton of fun. And for a movie like this, that's what really counts. Next week we'll be diving into Anaconda 3 Offspring, which is a direct-to-video sequel. Oh dear. If the Lake Placid series is anything to go by, it could be anything from stupid as fuck to just fucking stupid. So you won't want to miss it. So, Anacondas Hunt for the Blood Orchid, what did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you love it? Let me know in the comments below, and if you could please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, it would make me very happy. But above all else, thanks for watching.